What's going on with you guys? Notehead here, and today's video is a little bit different. If you can't tell by the title, it's a top 10 video. And I know what you're thinking. Wow, no, you must be totally original because no one ever does a top 10 list. And you're all a bunch of douches because I know you're kidding. Anyway, I just want to try it out because it looks fun. Editing an entire top 10 video looks fun, and I was right. It was. <laughs> But anyway, of course this won't be a regular thing, but we'll see how it goes. A couple things with this list. Of course, it's my opinion, and these are all games that I personally played as a kid. So if there's a game on this list that you think should be on this list, it's not necessarily because I don't like it, it's probably just because I never played it. Because all these games I played a lot when I was a kid. Also, I should probably put like a minor spoiler alert here as well. These games are older, so who really cares really? Anyway. Without further ado, here is my personal top 10 childhood games. SpongeBob SquarePants Lights Camera Pants. Weirdest SpongeBob game ever. The premise of this game was that Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward, Mr. Krabs, Plankton, and Sandy are all auditioning for different parts of a new Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy movie that Bikini Bottom was making. This game was strange to say the least, but I still enjoyed the concept. Each audition was similar to a Mario Party minigame, but just a tad bit less bloodthirsty. Only set of games that I didn't really like were the ones from Mrs. Pup's Boating School, as for some reason, I almost could never pass it. It was only recently before I stopped playing it that I finally beat the whole thing. Overall, this game was fun for my brother and I to play. Also, only in this game will you see Patrick kill a drum solo like this. Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards. There's one word to describe this game. Cute! Here's how I understood the premise of this game when I was a kid. Giant evil blob comes from space. Try to kill it. End of story. It's always funny to see this cute character deal with such ridiculously scary and ridiculously funny sometimes enemies. The gameplay was never really that hard, and all the boss fights were really interesting. The only gripe that I had with the game was that it was slow. Kirby moved pretty slowly for my own taste, but that's a small complaint. But to compensate for that, check out this music! This was honestly one of the games where I thought that King DDD was one of the coolest people in gaming. Unfortunately, then I saw this. <laughs> Missile Command for the PlayStation 1. I'm honestly not sure what drew me to this game. It was strange. Although the cool thing about it was, this game included an original 8-bit version of the game, just to tickle all the nostalgia people, as well as a version where apparently, um, an alien invasion is upon the earth and this guy, this guy, and this chick have to save the day by piloting their ship and shooting all of the alien snakes coming from this huge thing. Ah, <sighs> cool game but it got much harder as the game progressed. And because of this, I was never able to beat it as a kid. By the time I got older and wanted to tackle it again, unfortunately, my PS1 stopped working. I know there's an ending somewhere to it, but my endings always ended up looking like this.
Frogger for the PlayStation 1. Similar to Missile Command, Frogger was a 3D version of the original arcade game. Frogger still had to pick up the other rainbow-colored frogs, but with the addition of many more obstacles besides the usual traffic and river. There was no real story to it, it was just putting Frogger in multiple different environments, including a forest, a canopy of honeybee hives, a factory, a cavern, and what I'm assuming to be the freaking sewers. Needless to say, I never really finished this one either. Mega Man 8. Ah, the classic game of a man-bot person who kills robots and plagiarizes the crap out of them afterwards. You monster. Anyway, Dr. Wily is freaking at it again, and we have to get past his robot goons and get to his castle to stop... whatever he's doing. And of course, on the way, you're given power-ups like the Thunderclaw, Astro Crush, Flash Bomb, and Flame Sword. It was definitely a fun game for me to play. But of course, this adds on to the list of childhood games that I never finished as a kid. By the way, what logic would constitute anyone to think that playing soccer can defeat a giant turtle monster? Sonic the Hedgehog! I mean, it can't get any more nostalgic than this. The original game that introduced Sega's new mascot who was going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nintendo's moneymaker, Mario. This game was colorful. Like, really, really, really colorful. Even the darker stages like Marble Zone were vibrant and vivid. Sonic's a legend, and he always will be, but at the time, I was too young to know how important he was. I just thought the game was fun. It was also one game where the soundtrack will always be danceable for the rest of my life. Pac-Man World 2 I seem to have a thing for newer and modern versions of classics. Of course you had your good old buddy Pac-Man, whose goal was to get the dots, get the fruit, and kill the ghosts. The Ghost Gang, Blinky, Inky, Pinky, and Clyde, were still the main antagonists, but in this game, they were being controlled by a higher power that they accidentally unleashed. A ghost named Spooky was let loose, and told the ghosts to hide and guard the golden fruit that imprisoned him in the first place, so that he would remain free. This game was incredibly fun. It was similar to Frogger in that your usual objective was scattered over a rather beautiful map. But, unlike Frogger, you still had the option to play the original arcade Pac-Man if you wanted to. Only thing I didn't like about the game was the submarine levels. I mean, who plays Pac-Man to do this? Mario Party 2! Ah, Mario Party. The second in the duo of friendship ruining Mario games. Mario Party 2 was usually a bloodthirsty war between me, my brother, and anyone who dared visit at our house to see who would get the most stars. Can't tell you how many times that freaking boo has stolen the only star that I'd ever find in the round. The mini games were really diverse. I found myself loving some mini games and absolutely loathing others. That's honestly just how Mario Party should be. The Mario Party games today honestly sad me, because it was the duel of mini games that made it fun. Now you ride in the same car, get these small white stars instead of the classic big yellow one, and everyone, for the most part, is rewarded for mini games even if they lose. I know there was Mario Party, but it was Mario Party 2 that introduced me to the beautiful mayhem that Mario Party was originally known for. Star Fox 64! 
This was probably my first fighter pilot game, and maybe even my first epic action game overall. With the help of Peppy, Falco, and... Ugh. Frickin' this idiot! Whoa! Help me! Fox McCloud pilots the R-Wing through dangerous terrain in Cornaria, which is pretty much Earth, Pachina, which is pretty much Mercury, Aquas, which is pretty much Neptune, Titania, which is pretty much Saturn, and Solar, which is pretty much the freaking Sun. Wow. This game was a little slow paced, but each mission had something cool in it. This game paved the soft spot in my heart for Star Fox, causing me to get Star Fox Assault, Star Fox Command, and the Star Fox 64 remake on the 3DS. Is it morbid that I wondered where Fox's corpse was every time he died in the R-Wing explosion? Horrible. Pokemon Stadium. No story, no progression, just Pokemon battling it out, and it was glorious. I adored this game because it was simple. You'd pick your Pokemon, go into the arena, choose a move, and watch the fight. For the most part, the Pokemon moves themselves were awesome and really believable. I mean, the move Psychic was trippy, but it was awesome. Then there's Fire Blast. And Surf was just fun to watch. The mini games were a nice break from the battling, but it was the battles themselves that were my favorite. There was no progression, leveling up, or grinding in your Pokemon. You could have a team of monsters face your opponent, who also picks the same monsters, and just have fun. I played many games when I was a kid, but Pokemon Stadium was the one with no limits, and it was all about the kids using their favorite Pokemon and having fun. And it's that fun that puts Pokemon Stadium at the top of the list. So there you go, there's my top 10. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Of course, like I said before, it's not really gonna be a regular thing, but I just want, kinda wanted to try it out, you know, and see where it took me. I think it took me on a decent path and I had a lot of fun recording it and editing it and doing all of that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will hopefully get a Siege video up soon. Until then, I will see you when I see you.